Simpson, a bull birthday in a bear mark. And let's hope he rallies in late trading, Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drift down with him with a decade now, will you? Keep up with the plucky little pound, Nigel. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the dear old pound. <laughs> Happy birthday, darling. Oh. Uh, what is it? A little token of appreciation from the chairman's daughter for six months of dedicated service. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the dollar got to. <laughs> One more thing. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Greetings to you, Nigel, whose happy birthday this is. We wish you all you wish yourself. That's money, dear, and kisses. Yay! <laughs> Your name Nigel Timpson? Yes. I'm Detective Inspector Arbuthnot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Detective Sergeant Rayner of the Fraud Squad. And I'm arresting you for certain offences contrary to the Company's Act. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, Here we go. Thank you. Seriously, serious. Head of the Timpson clan, alleged to have entered the warehouse by night. Aren't you getting on a bit for this sort of thing, Fred? Oh, it's not me I'm worried about, Mr. Rumpel. It's young Nigel. Nigel? I don't think we've met professionally. Oh, that's Cousin Andy's lab what went into the city. Works cheek by jail with them lads from meet in Arrow College. Oh, and this prodigy's in some sort of trouble, is it? I wouldn't mind his trouble. Runs around in an F. Reg Porsche, girlfriend of boss's daughter. Well, what can I do to help him? Well, he's got himself arrested. Fraud squad. Ah, so he hasn't let down the honour of the Timpsons after all. No, you've always looked after us, Mr. Rump. Oh, you've been good to all the family. Yeah, well, fraud isn't my favourite subject, Fred. Now, if he'd got himself into some other little difficulty, preferably involving bloodstains. Well, we've got to do our best for our Nigel, see, because he's the only one of the Timpsons what has ever been outwardly mobile. Rosie? Where are you? In the bath. What happened? Nothing much. Bail renewed. I had a long talk with my father. And I had a long talk with Daddy. Oh, yes? He's going to do absolutely all he can. And of course, he has to tell the truth as he knows it. Of course. I've never even met your father. Well, if you're absolutely dead keen on tea with Dad and Gran and all the cousins in Shepherd's Bush... It'd perhaps it'd be rather fun when all this is over. That's what I thought. Anyway, he's consulted his cousin Fred. And there's this old character who apparently performs miracles down at the Old Bailey. <gasps> Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more. Rumpel! Macbeth doth murder sleep, the innocent sleep, sleep that knits up the rabble, sleep of care, the death of each day's life, sore labour's bath, balm of hurt minds. What on earth are you doing? Rumpel shall sleep no more. You don't need the gas. Pull on in March. Oh, Hilda, there's a chill wind blowing. Half is quite enough. I'm not going to have the gas be wasted now that I own it. <laughs> Hilda, a 25 pound shareholding doesn't give you outright possession of the North Sea. All the same, it's the principle of the thing. I went to the bank today, Rumpel. Oh, pleased to see you were that caring bank. Mr. Truscott, the manager, asked me in for a little talk. It was not a pleasant experience. <laughs> no, no, he's not much of a conversationalist, is he, old uh, Truscott? No. We'll catch this one now, he said, but tell Mr. Rumpole that he's scraping the bottom of the barrel. Why are you scraping the bottom of the barrel, Rumpole? Because, Hilda, the government doesn't believe in spending out on legal aid. And because the time it takes for the cheques to come through is about equal to the gestation period of the giant Galapagos turtle. And because my hard-earned cash is frittered away on things like rent and income tax. 
and uh, sliced bread, and uh, washing powder, and a Brillo pad. And because you don't get £100,000 a case. And antiquacks. Who does get 100000 Robin Papiat. His estimated fee for the Allied Chemical Negligence case is said to be over £100,000. Yes, that's a civil matter, Hilda, and Papiat is a QC. Why aren't you a QC, Rumpo? Hilda! Well, why aren't you? Hilda Erskine Brown's a QC. Oh, you know, you may not have noticed this, but I bear practically no resemblance to Phyllis Erskine Brown. In the first place, I'm not a woman. I want you to pull up your socks, that's what I want. And if you don't, well, it's quite likely you may spend your old age alone. Promises, promises. What do you say? I, I miss you, miss you, Hilda, I said. Yes, I expect you would. And we're missing the city programme. We're still hearing a lot about crime in the city, Sir Christopher. What's the reason? Is it the after-effects of Big Bang? Well, I'm afraid the city isn't what it was. I'm very much afraid not. What do you mean by that exactly? In the old days, when I first joined the firm, which now bears my name... J. Fitzgerald. Exactly. The stockbroker's word was his bond, no doubt about that. We had our rules. And you've no hope of breaking them any more than you would have failed to offer your seat to a lady or eaten peas with a knife. Insider dealing? Well, we never heard of insider dealing. And why? Not because there were any laws against it, because it just wasn't on. Now we have a flood of young men in the city. Barrow boys, spivs, I call them. Wide boys. No wonder you get into trouble. Thank you, Sir Christopher. No, not a bit. <laughs> that was Sir Christopher J. Fett of J. Fett Jarraway Stockbrokers. Sir, After the break, how you can raise money on half-paid-up granny bonds. And he looked a great deal younger than you. Granny flat. Ah. See, Craigie, I go to my office the same time as my daughter. That means I'm a uh, yuppie at heart. <laughs> yes, Sir Christopher. Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying to Craigie, I'm still a yuppie at heart. What's the matter, Rosie? It's not this wretched case, is it? What does you mean about Barrow, boys? There's some people in the city, not at Jaffitz, of course. Good morning, Sir Christopher. Mm. Good morning, Patrick. Morning, Patrick. You didn't mean Nigel. Oh, God, no. As far as I'm concerned, Nigel Timpson's a bloody hard worker. I don't believe for a moment. So long as you didn't need Nigel. Well, the chap's a hard worker. I don't need to know about his family. <laughs> Do you know anything about his family, darling? Not much. Except there's lots and lots of them. He's asked me to go to tea when all this is over. I've been invited to tea. I'm sure it's perfectly all right. I couldn't wish for a harder worker. I want you to be happy. You know that, don't you? Your mother and I only want you to be happy. Famous victory, Henry. Got Fred Timpson off on the warehouse break-in. Insufficient identification. Oh, yeah. Justice was done, wasn't it? What's eating you, Henry? Nothing, Mr. Rumpole. I'm reading. Oh, really? What's the book? It's not a book, sir. It's a brochure. Come to the land of the koala bear and the kookaburra. Sport topless on Bondi Beach. Bet your bottom dollar at surface paradise. Watch the cricket in Melbourne take the family to the footy. Yeah. Do I deduce from this you are planning a holiday in the Antipodes? Not a holiday, Mr. Rumpole. Besides, your con's waiting for you. It's another Timpson. Things aren't what they were with the Big Bang, Mr. Rumpole. Not since the market's been falling. There's people losing their jobs. So, they say that in order to supplement your income, you did a bit of insider dealing. And, of course, you know what that is. Of course, Mr. Rumpole. Mm. Don't you? Don't I? Know what insider dealing is? Of course I do, yes. But I thought it might be better all round if you explained it in your own words. Explain it to you? Yes, please. But you know. I know, I know. But the jury doesn't know I know, do they? How would you explain it to them? Well, don't the prosecution have to do that? Oh, come on, Nigel. We can't leave everything to the prosecution. Well, there's this little fish swimming along. Little fish? A little company, Cornucopia Preserves and Jams Limited. Ah, first-class marmalade adorns our breakfast table at Gloucester Road. It's undervalued stock. It's a big factory, lots of old shops and street corners. And it seemed WGI was about to make a dawn raid. WGI? Worldwide Groceries Incorporated. Ah, yes, of course. Dawn raid. Puts me in mind of my old days in the RAF grand staff. It was a takeover bid. It's a sudden jump to buy the stock before anyone else has quite woken up to it. 
Anyway, a week before that happened, I bought £68,000 worth of Cornucopia shares for a client. And then Cornucopia shares went soaring up. They say you'd got to know about the Dawn Raid. Yes, which was being planned. Where? In the corporate finance department of our firm, Jaffid Jarrowin. Ah, well then, no, you... No, I couldn't. It's in a different department. Behind a Chinese wall. Behind a what? <laughs> you know, a wall of silence. Between departments in the same building. We call them Chinese walls. Yes, of course, I knew that. I knew that. I just wanted to see how you'd explain it for the benefit of the jury. But not everyone <coughs> stays in their right place behind these imaginary constructions. Well, everyone in our firm does. You sure? You'd be out on your ear if you broke the rules. Oh, really? It's Sir Christopher Jaffet, our chairman. Very keen on the sanctity of Chinese walls, is Sir Christopher. Bit of a Mandarin, is he? You could say that. This woman you bought the shares for? Miss Glogue. Yes, Miss Mabel Glogue. <coughs> you never met her? No. Apparently, uh, someone had recommended us. She had a bit of money and I moved it about a bit for her. And then she rang up and said she had this legacy, 68,000 pounds, and she wanted to put it all into cornucopia shares. Which you did for her? Yes, and when I sold them again, she doubled her money. After the takeover. What was she like? Well, I never met her. No, oh, well, you spoke to her on the telephone. She sounded rather a nice old lady. Surprised me. What surprised you? I suppose that she was dealing on the stock exchange. Mm -hmm. Her cheque was sent to a post office box number in Harrogate in Yorkshire. Well, I suppose that's where she lived. She never gave us an address. No, well, somebody picked up her letters, presumably somebody calling themselves Miss Mabel Glogue. And after the transaction was completed, some anonymous well-wisher paid 20,000 smackers into your bank account in the National West Country Bank in London Wall. I could only think. What? That was Miss Cloag, showing her gratitude. I never got a chance to thank her. But you must have told her where you banked. No, that's a strange thing. No, I never did. Really? But your first job, Mr. Bernard, trace this Miss Mabel Glogue and get a statement out of her. It seems you know Sir Christopher Jaffet's daughter. <coughs> We've been going out together for about uh, six months. I suppose that means staying in together, does it, on the Isle of Dog? Well, yes. We make up a dink. A dink. Do translate. Double income, no kids. That's what we call it. How quaint. Now it seems I'm a yid. Really? Young, indictable dealer. <laughs> it's not really very funny, is it? We've got to start learning a new language. Do you realize that, Mr. Bernard? You can forget about tea leaves and shooters. We're in a strange new world of dinks, dawn raids, and Chinese walls. Does it make you a bit nostalgic for the simple old days where you just smashed a window, grabbed some loot, and ran? The world's changed. God knows how we're going to get used to it. You think I did it, don't you? That's for the jury to decide. Found it. It was in my filofax all the time. What have you found? I remembered. I was busy once when she rang. She gave me a number to ring back. Hello. Is that uh, Harrogate 2751? Whose number? Can I speak to Miss Mabel Glogue, please? Who is that, please? The landlord? No, uh, Glogue. G L. O-A-G, Mabel Glow. Well, thank you. Who on earth have you been trying to ring? The old Yorkshire Grey. It's a pub in Harrogate. Seems they've never heard of Mabel Glow. What the hell's the matter with a woman? Didn't she exist or something? Hilda! Good news, Hilda! No, I haven't taken silk, but it's a money brief, not on legal aid. A huge city scandal, one that requires my uh, considerable financial expertise. They've privatized the electricity. Damn. 
To bring you to your senses, Rumpole, perhaps if I leave you alone, you'll have time to think seriously about your career. Gone. Gone. Ah, sleep that knits up the raveled sleeve of care, balm of hurt minds, great nature's second course, chief nourisher in life's feast. <clears throat> Hello. Yes, Rumpel speaking. Fred Timpson? Oh, I'd forgotten for a minute. You're free to make phone calls now, aren't you? Help, what, what? Oh, young Nigel. Well, that's very decent of you. Well, we're trying to trace a woman called Miss Mabel Glog. She had a post office box number in Harrogate, since vanished. Oh, Mr. Bernard's doing his best. Well, that'll be splendid. Thank you. All right. Bye. Ah, oh, Timpson hath murdered sleep. You know, Rumpel, I've been waiting four years to join the Sheridan Club. Oh, isn't that rather a paltry ambition for someone who can sit through Tannhäuser without laughing? Philly thinks it would help me to get on and take silk. Uh -huh. Wives. They're always more ambitious for a fellow than a fellow's ambitious for himself. Yes. The trouble is, Ballard's threatening to blackball me. Why on earth? He's on the committee. He's going... He's going to remind them of that unfortunate incident when I was photographed in the kit and go, go But, Claude, you were completely exonerated. You'd only gone in to inspect the scene of the crime. Yes, but Ballard says that members of the Sheridan Club should be like Caesar's wife, above suspicion. And if he decides to blackball, the others on the committee might follow his lead. Whatever have we done to have Soapy Sam Ballard wished on us as head of chambers? Mm. I have... Well, come in, you fellows. We're in, we're in. Yes, well, sit yourselves down. Hello, I have... I have reason to believe that a crime has been committed of major proportions. Somebody's nicked the nail brush from the downstairs loo. I received a fee of 50 pounds for an opinion and a breathalyzer. I signed the receipt, of course, in the usual manner. You come a bit cheap, don't you, Ballard? It's one of Her Majesty the Queen's counsel. Do any of you remember how the Pelham Wittishins became accusing? No, please, Uncle Tom. Right then, I'll tell you. Mm. You see, the Lord Chancellor had two lists. One for the chaps he was going to make QCs, and the other for those he was going to invite down to his place for a spot of shooting. Well, it seems he got a bit fuddled and mixed up the two lists. Old Pelham was absolute sudden death to a woodcock, but never dared open his mouth in court. <laughs> in spite of that, he was given a silk gown and put QC after his name, much to everyone's amazement. <laughs> I still don't understand. You don't shoot, do you, Ballard? Well, perhaps, Rumpole, I got silk because I don't regard the criminal law of England solely as a subject for jokes about nail brushes and such like matters. Ah. Now, if we might be allowed to return to the subject in hand... By all means. Thank you. Can you tell us about your little breathalyzer? Yes, I know, I know. Now, I signed the receipt and gave the cheque back to Henry to bank. That cheque, it is my painful duty to tell you, never reached the National West Country, nor have I yet received a satisfactory explanation. Eaten by mice. Look, try to take things seriously, Rumpo. No, maybe Rumpo's right. There are mice in that old cupboard in the clerk's room. I sometimes have a sneaky feeling they've been at the digestive biscuit. Yes, yes, yes. Now, I've told Henry he has to give me a satisfactory explanation. Uh, how much was it? Fifty quid. Oh, yes, he'll retire, live on that for the rest of his life. Come to think of it, I have seen Henry reading a brochure about Australia. Thank you, Hoskins. That is extremely valuable evidence. And how do we imagine that he affords a vintage Triumph sports car? By having the intelligence to be a barrister's clerk and not a barrister. He sits in comfort, takes 10% of our hard-earned cash while we slog out to do breathalyzers on the cheap. And slog home on the underground, speaking for myself. Of course, Philly usually has the rover. Oh, I agree. Yes, and I've seen our typist... Uh, uh, Diane. Uh, Diane. Mm. I've seen our Diane. typist... Yes. Mm. I have seen our typist, Diane, riding beside Henry in that, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, the 
triumphant car. Yes, with the roof open. I understand. He gives her a lift home occasionally. No, no, no. His marriage is on the rocks, Rumpo. And when a fellow's marriage is on the rocks, he can't always be trusted with a cheque. Indeed. Oh, really? How's your marriage, fellow? Well, you know perfectly well, Rumpo. I'm a bachelor. Then aren't you rather in the position of a lifelong vegetarian giving us your recipe for a steak and kidney pie? Let us try to keep to the um, matter in hand, shall we? Um, is it the opinion of the meeting uh, that I tell Henry he has to account for the missing cheque or else? Or else what? Or else he must look elsewhere for employment. I assume we want to avoid the embarrassment of a prosecution. I support the head of Chambers. Thank you, Erskine Brown. No, I, I, I think that we in Chambers should support each other. I shall be behind you in this ballad, as I expect you to be behind me in um, another matter. Another matter? He means his membership of the Sheridan Club. Well, I can't promise you that, Erskine Brown. No, each case, I feel, must be decided strictly on its merits. Uh, now, all those in favour of an ultimatum to Henry. <coughs> and those against? Well, then, the resolution is clearly carried. I suggest we all go home by underground train, as you've observed, Erskine Brown. Alas, my underground train will be carrying me to a bachelor establishment in Waltham Cross. Not all of us have been blessed with the warmth and loving companionship of married life. As, as you have, Rumpole. Hello, sunshine. <laughs> Blimey. Times have changed. Champagne on the Isle of Dogs. You know, young Nigel's dead end. He was uh, born round here. Spent his whole life working his way up to Shepherd's Bush. Now, young Nigel's come back to live down the East End. Ha! Makes you laugh, doesn't it? Cheers, miss. I just uh, wanted to say that if the lad's in need of a bit of help, like someone to say was down the Needle Arms Bromley at the time in question. Sorry? Uh, Nigel's with his solicitor. They're trying to find a witness somewhere up north. Harrogate, in fact. A uh, Miss Mabel Gloag. Gloag, you tell me? Lives in Allegates? Yeah, that's Yorkshire, isn't it? Your cousin Denny lives up in Yorkshire, yes, I think. He's at liberty at the moment, yeah. Let us see what we can do. Cool. Lovely views you've got up here, miss. Oh, here, my cousin Cyril's lad. He's gone into the window cleaning. Now, you can trust him not to nick anything, seeing as your family. Last orders, please. Come on, now, gentlemen. Last orders. <laughs> it's Henry! 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 Last order. I'll take a gin and dubonnet with you, Mr. Ampo. A gin and dubonnet, please, Jack. And a glass of Chateau Thames en banc mong, please. Right. Soap me Sam Bellard, our learned head of chambers. He thinks I robbed him of 50 quid, doesn't he? Yes. Wants me out of my ear, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he's welcome, that's all I can say. He's very exceedingly uh, welcome. Yeah. I'm oh. just closing. Yes, uh, on the sled check, please. Uh, the legal aid checks in the, in the post. Oh, yeah, have it on me. <sighs> oh. oh. Don't worry, Mr. Rumpel. Yeah. It isn't Mr. Ballard's money. Oh. He can say what he likes to Mr. Ballard. Because if I'm sat for thieving, Mr. Rumpel, how could I face my wife and the neighbours in Bexley Heath? Bexley Heath, eh? How could my marriage possibly survive? Quite frankly, a new life beckons. <clears throat> well, wouldn't your, your wife stand by you? Well, drink up. My no, wife, Mr. Rumpel, has gone into public life. Oh? She has taken her seat on the council. She is chair of the Disabled Toilets Inquiry. She is also chair of the Senior Citizens' Ways and Means and Equal Opportunities in Catering. Oh. These responsibilities keep her out every evening. Do you know what I return home to now, Mr. Rumpel? No. Quite frankly, I return home to a cheese on toast. Oh, Jimmy. Have you any conception, sir, of what it's like to find yourself married to a chair? <laughs> You thought you were married to a woman, instead of which you find yourself tied to an article of furniture. Oh, too true that, Mr. Rumpole. Too very true. But I'll tell you something else. Please, please feel free. Now she's that active in local government, mm -hmm. there's nothing to stop her getting mayor eventually. Oh. In due course of time, Mr. Rumpole, I shall serve out my year as a lady mayoress. Oh, my heart bleeds for you, Henry. Only one way out, quite frankly. Only one means of escape as I reads the situation. What, what, what? Well, 
could my wife appear with a mayoress sacked from his job in the temple for petty theft, Mr. Rampole? Ah, that would cause some embarrassment at the ceremony. Ah, too true, Mr. Rampole, too very true. And to spare that, I would start a new life in the Dandenong Mountains, the state of Victoria. Well, I suppose there are barristers' chambers in the Dandenong Mountains. Oh, I'm not clerking anymore. Mm. I'm going to take up a new career. You don't want to be a barrister. It is my intention, sir, to go into show business. Not well, much the same thing, really. <laughs> you, um, you may remember, I, I, I starred in Private Lives opposite Miss Osgood from the old Belly List office. Something of a hit, as I remember. Oh, a rave notice. That's all in the Bexley Heath advertiser. Yeah. Well, Diane, you know Diane? Ah, oh, plucky but somewhat hit and miss typist. Yeah, yeah, but her cousin runs the Commonwealth Inn in the Dandenongs. Mm -hmm. She's going as receptionist and I shall be placed in charge of entertainment. Where are you going to perform? In cabaret, from time to time, I might make a personal appearance. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm working up a nostalgia number. Songs from the wartime years, as my old father used to sing them. Roll out the barrel. Yeah, exactly so. Let's have a barrel. Sorry, up. time's up, Mr. Rompo. Oh. I tell you what, dear, dear old lady Mayoress, let's have a nightcap at home. Earn yours, Mr. Rompo? Yes. I have a not so. Yes. Um, I'm leading a somewhat bachelor existence in the Gloucester Road. Oh, a bachelor existence, sir. Yeah. You gentlemen get all the luck. Yeah. Do you remember this one, sir? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy. Oh, mind how you go now. You All in the dark. No help. And believe me, he shall go to sleep. Give me his own little room again. Make yourself at home on him. I'll just get the bottle open. Take cover, Henry. Daddy would uh, never have done it, Rumpo. Oh, please, Hilda. I have a long day in court coming up and I'm not feeling quite up to snuff. Is this coffee? Well, of course it's coffee. What have you been having for breakfast while I was away? Red biddy, I oh, suppose. Oh, please. I know that Pomeroy's very ordinary is hardly Chateau de Tour, but to call it Red Biddy. I it... go away to spend a few days with an old school friend. Hilda came to spend a few days with me. Just a few days with Dodo? I think she wanted to give you time, Rumpo, to think things over. And I come back and I find you carousing with your clock. Neither of you ladies got an aspirin. I don't think you'll find the drugs are the answer, Rumpo. The answer is not to do it in the first place. No, if you've already done the thing, I mean. It's so terribly important at the moment, isn't it, Hilda, that Rumpo should only do the dumb thing. At this moment, in his career. Exactly, Dodo. What do you mean, exactly, Dodo? At what moment? Now that you've applied to the Lord Chancellor to make you a Queen's Counsel. Well, I don't suppose it would look quite the thing to have Rumpole QC singing with his club. But would I it? have not applied to the Lord. Oh, yes, you have, Rumpole. I can remember last night perfectly clearly. I think I did not. I made the application for you. What? I wrote to the Lord Chancellor. I didn't mince my words. I hope I put in my letter that Rumpo will be called to take his place in the front row without further delay. Hilda, you didn't. Well, someone has to take your career in hand, Rumpo, before it's too late. Oh, for God's sake, hasn't anybody got an aspirin? Uh, Mr. Rumpo, uh, you know my cousin Dennis? Um, of course, Pennywise Bank robbery. Yeah, well, Dennis living up north now, they're coming out a few investigations on behalf of young Nigel. Yeah, I called round the old Yorkshire Grey in Harrogate, Mr. Rumpo. A uh, certain mate of mine. It's on friendly terms with the landlord. Oh, I'm trying to get a line on that Miss Mabel Globe. That's right, Mabel Globe. Did you find her? Quite frankly, Mr. Rumpo, no. Thanks for trying. Yeah, but this governor of the Yorkshire Grey, he did say there was an old girl there, always talking about the stocks and shares she was buying. Oh? Yeah, apparently she's just going there in the morning, have a Guinness or two, and use the phone to ring a stockbroker. Yeah. Mrs. Prescott. Prescott? That's not much help. 
Anything else known about her? No, not really. Respectable old trout, apparently. Always talking about some smart city family. Used to be nursemaid to the children. Seems as if she got her taste for high finance. Mrs. Prescott. Nanny Prescott. She's still about. Nah, nah. He ain't seen him for the last three months, Governor said. I wonder. Judge is coming, Mr. Rumpole. Yes. Better get to work. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry I couldn't be more help, Mr. Rumpole. Yes, Mr. Hector Villacart. What the Crown says is this. Having got hold of the secret information that cornucopia jams were about to be taken over by worldwide groceries, this young man, Nigel Timpson, bought no less than £68,000 worth of cornucopia shares. When the takeover bid was completed, those shares doubled their value. I say he bought them, members of the jury. He may be going to tell you that he bought them for a client, a Miss Mabel Globe. Who is this Miss Mabel Globe, you may well ask? It appears Nanny she Prescott's has just not possible. Post office box number in Harrogate. Why did you say that? Eventually sent. Nanny Prescott. No one well, has been able her. to discover any oh, further information. That was the name of our old nanny, years ago when we were kids. Mrs. Prescott. Oh, did she have a Christian name by any chance? Maybe. That's what we used to call her. Maybe, Mabel. Look, if you had a look, do you think he could dig out a photograph of this queen of the nursery? Mr. Rumpo, oh, yes, my lord. it's customary for counsel and solicitors to discuss their cases before coming into court, not during the opening speech for the prosecution. Ah, yes, thank you, my lord. Oh, is my learned friend still opening? Oh, fascinating stuff, of course. I, I shall be all attention. Yes, yes Mr. Velicard. The sum of £20,000 was paid into the defendant Timpson's bank account when the transaction was completed. Can you doubt, members of the jury, that this was the defendant's first dip into his ill-gotten gains? No doubt spent on his champagne and his Porsche motor car? My, lo My lord, I object. What this young man chooses to drink is entirely irrelevant. Mr. Villicott, will there be any evidence as to the defendant's earnings? In a good year with bonuses, about 70000 well, that will be Sir Christopher Jaffet's evidence. Good heavens. It's more than... Uh, more than well, an old Bailey judge earns, was your honour about to say. <laughs> Silence! <laughs> it's a considerable sum of money, particularly if it's added to by the proceeds of illegal dealings. Yes, Mr. Velikoff. My lord, I call Mr. Shillingford. Now's a good time to duck out. Mr. Hugo Shillingford. Thank you. Just wait there, would you, Mr. Shillingford? Yes, Mr. Shillingford, you have said that you were not a close friend of Nigel Timpson. Well, I mean, we never went to school together. Ah, yes, he got his education at Wapping Comprehensive uh, and the Shepherd's Bush Market. No doubt gained his financial expertise fixing the price of Cox's Orange Pippins. Tell me, isn't he what you young gentlemen of the city would call a barrow boy, uh, as distinct from a harrow boy, of course? Honestly, I didn't know all that about Nigel. Ah, but you knew he hadn't gone to a public school. Oh, yes, I knew that. Now, <clears throat> when he said it made a killing on cornucopia shares, did he not also add the words, uh, for some little old lady in Harrogate? I didn't hear that. You didn't hear him say that. Uh, what, um, what were you celebrating in uh, the wine bar? Uh, was it your birthday on that occasion? Yes. Yes, it was, now I come to think of it. And uh, were you occupied doing some juggling? Occupied doing some what? Mr. Rumpel? Uh, juggling, my lord, with a couple of champagne glasses and a bottle of Dom Perignon. Juggling with Dom Perignon? As a matter of fact, I was. I rather think I dropped it. Ah, yes, and at that tragic moment, might Mr. Nigel Timpson not have mentioned the little old lady from Harrogate when you weren't listening? Yes. Yes, I suppose he might. Thank you. Now, one other matter. Have there not been suspicions of previous insider dealings around your firm of Jaffet Jarraway? My well, lord, this can't be relevant. Whether it's relevant or not, it can't possibly help your client, Mr. Rumpel. We have seen Detective Inspector Arbuthnot's statement about previous suspect deals. I had no intention of putting in that evidence, in fairness to the accused. In fairness to the accused, I would like an answer to the question. What is it, Mr. Schillingford? There was a lot of talk, yes that someone had been using information from the corporate finance department to buy share. Thank you, I'm much obliged. Someone had been using information. Mm -hmm.
Sir Christopher Jayford. Yes? This way, sir. Sir Christopher, you don't like Barrow Boys, do you? Excuse me? I don't suppose the witness understands that question any better than I do, Mr. Rumpel. Oh, your Lordship is quite wrong about that. Sir Christopher understands me very well. You did an interview on television for the City programme, didn't you? Yes, I did. You said that the crime wave in the city was due to the large number of Barrow Boys that had got into the stock exchange. I said the old traditions of a gentleman's word being his bond had died out, and I regret it. I'm sure we all regret it, Sir Christopher. The Thank standard you. of gentlemanly behaviour is declining, even in the legal profession. Yes, Mr. Rumpel. Nigel Timpson came to you as an office boy, did he not? I believe that is so. And he attained his present position by honest hard work. I believe he was honest, to start with. Got to know your daughter rather well. They became quite friendly, yes. Oh, don't let's mince matters, Sir Christopher. They live together, don't they, in a fashionable address on the Isle of Dogs? Really, Mr. Rumpel? Well, what's the answer, sir? Uh, Mr. Rumpel, has your client instructed you to attack the honour of this gentleman's daughter? My client's honour has been attacked. He is accused of being dishonest. What on earth can his relations with Miss Jaffet possibly have to do with it? My lord, may I make a suggestion? What is it? May I suggest that your lordship sits quietly and allows me to develop the defence? Whether I succeed or not will be entirely a matter for the jury, if your lordship pleases. Well, perhaps I can help. My daughter and Nigel Timpson are living together, yes. Thank you, Sir Christopher. That's the frankness I would expect from you, sir. Now, perhaps we can pass to something relevant. Oh, certainly. Have you found out much about Nigel Timpson's family? I made certain inquiries, yes. And have you discovered that several members of the clan have had more criminal convictions than we've had hot dinners? <laughs> Mr. Rumpel. And has this led you to view young Nigel Timpson with disfavor? I only want my daughter to be happy, Mr. Rumpel. But you don't want her to marry a barrow boy, do you? I would prefer it if my daughter did not marry into the Timpson family, if I have to be honest. Oh, yes, Sir Christopher, you have to be honest. And is that why you are giving evidence against him on this vague charge of uh, insider dealing? I have given evidence because it is the truth. It is the truth. Have you any more questions, Mr. Rumpel? Uh, just, uh, just a few, my lord. Get the clerk down to the National Registry. See if they can dig out the marriage certificate of Mrs. Mabel Prescott, me, Glow Glasgow. Sir Christopher, there have been suspicions of previous insider dealing in your firm prior to the cornucopia takeover, is not? Um, unfortunately, yes. Yes, and might not the person responsible for that have wanted to put the blame on this young Barrow boy, Nigel Timpson? Well, I suppose anything's possible. Yes, and isn't it possible uh, that this person could have instructed a Miss Globe to order her cornucopia shares through a Nigel Timpson, uh, provided, of course, that that, uh, that person knew that the shares would rise? I said it's possible. And uh, to make matters even worse for Nigel Timpson, might that person not have paid £20,000 into his bank account anonymously? He must have been a very generous someone indeed. <laughs> oh, do you really think so? Out of a profit of 68000 You are suggesting that this, this person was responsible for the previous insider deals? <laughs> that is precisely what I am suggesting, Sir Christopher. Do you have a bank account in the Cayman Islands? What's the matter, sir? Have you forgotten how many bank accounts you've accumulated? I have a small bank account in the Cayman Islands, yes. Yes, at the, uh, at the Trans World Archipelago Bank? I believe that's what the bank is called, yes. You believe that that's what it's called? Uh, my lord, we shall present evidence that the source of the 20,000 pounds was a bank in the Cayman Islands, the Trans World Archipelago. Uh, your daughter, Rose, a well-brought-up girl, I've no doubt. Yes, I hope so. And her formative years were presided over by a devoted nursemaid? We had a nanny, yes. Nanny Prescott. Uh, do you believe that was her name? It was her name, yes. Is that a photograph of Nanny Mabel Prescott? Yes, it is. That's Mrs. Prescott with my daughter, yes. Uh, can you tell us where she is now? I'm afraid I can't recall. I know she had a son in Australia. Perhaps she's gone out there. Oh, how very convenient. 
We have heard that she had a post office box number in Harrogate. Did you know she lived there? Oh, I did hear something about a family in Harrogate, yes. Mr. Rumpel, may I ask where these questions are leading? I hope, my lord, to the truth. Which is? Which is, my lord, that you, Sir Christopher, got your old servant using her maiden name of Glogue to order the cornucopia shares through Nigel Tibson. That you paid the 20,000 pounds into his bank account and you did all that to cover up your own insider dealing. A brilliant idea, was it not? To blame it all on one of these unspeakable barrow boys that have let down the honorable tradition of you old city gents. What's your answer, sir? That is an absolutely outrageous suggestion. Absolutely outrageous. My lord, may I uh, reserve the rest of my cross-examination until tomorrow morning? What is your reason for that, Mr. Rumpo? In the faint hope of collecting a bit of evidence to back up the outrageous suggestion. Well? Oh, in consideration, my lord, of, of the, uh, the witness, uh, Sir Christopher may be feeling a little tired. Yes, yes, excellent idea. Uh, shall we say 10.30 tomorrow morning, Sir Christopher? Mr. Rumpo. At the Lord Chancellor's office on the phone to Chambers. Who, oh, old Keith, you mean? Yeah, he wants you to meet him for a drink at the Sheridan Club. Old oh, Keith from the Chancellor's office. Oh, my ears and whiskers. I thought a drink at my club, Rumpole, might be the best way to get over this rather tricky situation. Yes, well, here's mud in your eye, uh, sir. Thank you. As you may know, the Lord Chancellor has received an extremely awkward letter from Mrs. Rumpole. Ah, yes, and Mrs. Rumpole can be awkward. She actually suggested that we give you silk. The Lord Chancellor was deeply, deeply embarrassed by it. Oh, I'm sorry. Made him squirm around a bit on the woolsack, did it? Some men are natural juniors, Rumpold. Experienced men, highly experienced. The good old non-commissioned officers of the Bailey. Absolutely no criticism of you, of course. But, well, at your age, you know, and given your type of practice, <laughs> silk really is out of the question. <laughs> Rumpold QC just can't be done. Oh, well. So... You'll break it to your wife. I know she'll be disappointed. Her father didn't get silk either. Old Whiston never quite made it. <laughs> Battling down the Bailey now, are you? Oh, yes. A big city fraud. Bit of insider dealing. Jolly good show. You'll want to be getting along home then. Carry on, Sergeant Rumpel. Ah, Rumpel. Ah. Ballard. What a pleasant surprise. Please, allow me to buy you a drink. Oh, uh, what's you. it to be, a claret? Uh, large claret. A oh, large claret, of course. <clears throat> George, a large claret, please, and a small Perrier water. Well, you're moving in elevated circles, aren't you? Oh. Old Keith from the Lord Chancellor's office. Oh, uh, Keith, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, Keith mentioned me at all. Ah, you want to know what Keith said about you. <laughs> Thank you, George. How much is there? Three pound fifty, Mr. Ballard. Three pound fifty? Uh, Three pound fifty, yes. Uh, uh, here, it's five pounds. No. Thank you. So, uh, what did Keith have to say about me? Keith said absolutely nothing about you, Ballard. There. Check for fifty pound on Snares Broken Higgs. Was that for the opinion on the breathalyzer you accused Henry of nicking? <laughs> well, I, uh, I, I, I must have put it in here and 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 forgotten about it. Yes, of course. Um, I'll, I'll tell Henry. Accusing your faithful clerk of stealing. I wonder what the Sheridan Club committee would uh, have to say about that. If I were you, old darling, I wouldn't ask anyone to blackball Claude Erskine Brown. No. No, of course not. No, I've always thought Claude would make a pretty good member here. Yes, he might liven the place up a bit. Bring on the dancing girls. <clears throat> uh, Rumpel. Rumpel. Yeah. Might I have a word in your shell, like old boy? The truth of the matter is, we can't find Sir Christopher Jaffert. Oh, you do astonish me. If you tried looking in the Grand Cayman, maybe he's turned himself into an offshore island. 
Well, Inspector Arbuthnot does seem to think he's done a bunk out of the country. Yes. Too quick for us, I'm afraid. We can't go on against Timson. The judge is not going to like it. Oh, don't worry about him, old darling. The shock will probably bring him back to life. Seems that Sir Christopher has absconded, old dear. And the prosecution's collapsed. Oh, yes, yes. No, you're my son. That's, That's it, yeah. He's yeah. done it, yeah. He's yeah. done, yeah. done a run already. Go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rosie, um, your father. I know. He's gone. Well, you did it to him, didn't you? You and that barrister and all your family out of various jails. Rosie, Rosie, come back. Leave me alone. Barrow boy. Diane, we've been through this a thousand times. <laughs> You've done it now, Mr. Rumpel. Yes, Henry, another famous victory. Chief witness against me made a dash for the nearest airport. Prosecution up an embarrassing creek without a paddle. No, no, no. I mean, you've done me in. You've only ruined my life, that's all. But, Henry, don't you know? Ballard's found the cheque. It's nothing but good news. Hasn't he apologised? You found the cheque, as I understand it, Mr. Rumpel, in his wallet. You made him apologise. Well, where do you think that leaves me? Where leaves you? Where? What do you mean? Lady Mayoress. I've got no way out now. Oh, Henry. I won't have to leave the country. I can't take up a new career in show business in the Dandenong Mountains. Diane and I won't be travelling to the Southern Hemisphere now, Mr. Rumpel. I'm stuck for the rest of my life in Bexley Heath, married to a chair. Henry, I'm sorry. Perhaps you'd be so kind as to leave me now, Mr. Rumpel. I wish to be alone with my dreams. What little is left of them. Oh, uh, by the way, Hilda, I uh, <clears throat> I had a little chat today with uh, with old Keith from the Lord Chancellor's office. As a matter of fact, he asked me for a drink in his club. He didn't. Oh yes, we had a little uh, chat in the Sheridan. And what is it now, Rumpel QC? Ah uh, no, Hilda, I'm afraid not. Not? No. But. He was talking about your learned father, old C.H. Wiston. The man from the Lord Chancellor's office was talking about Daddy? Yes, at some length. Saying what a brilliant lawyer he was. They were going to make him a QC, you know. Daddy QC? Exactly. But then he went off to a higher court, as old uh, Keith put it, to the Great Appeals Court in the sky. Daddy died? Uh, sadly, yes. And, of course, as... Uh, as old C.H. Whiston had missed it, I mean, they could hardly give it to a mere son-in-law, could they? I mean, uh, some rule about there being too many Q.C.'s in one family or something. Yes. Yes, I do understand, Rumpel. After Daddy, it would be a bit of a come down to give it to you. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but the Lord Chancellor sent his love uh, from the Woolsack and uh, said you uh, needn't uh, trouble to write again. How very kind of him. Such a charming man. Mm. Very good legs, I always think, in britches. Rumpel, are you feeling a little bit chilly? Would you like another bar or two of the fire on? Oh, good heavens, we're missing. City programme. After effects of Big Bang, Sue Bickerson. I'm thinking of board. buying British Airways. The sudden disappearance of Sir Christopher Jaffet in the middle of the Old Bailey insider dealing trial is likely to cause nervousness on the London market and a shudder in the Dow Jones. Hilda is making a bid for the old Lancashire firm of Smithson's Genuine Humbug. My Asinas Holdings are planning a bid for British prisons when they're privatised. <laughs>
Thank you.